Hello and welcome to a happy new episode of 420 Grams here on NewsClick.in. Uh, we're joined in studio today by India women's football superstar Dalima Chabbar. Uh, thanks for coming in. Thank you. And we have a Raghunandan who is not a superstar in any way. I thought I was, I could be 420 <laughs> Grams superstar. <laughs> So we're, ta we're talking essentially about uh, rounding up sort of the first round of matches, the group stage of matches at the Women's World Cup that's currently underway in France. Um, we all have our own teams that we're following yeah. and backing. So let's start with you. Uh, how's it been watching the tournament? What are the key standout sort of events? And what's your team? Uh, the World Cup so far has been crazy. I feel there have been some outstanding performances by, especially by some of the youngsters. Like you can see Nikita Paris coming in from England, and then there's DK Martins performing really good well. And then, uh, like you know, like there have been uh, such uh, comebacks in a lot of matches, and um, with the score lines have been huge. And my team that I'm supporting is Australia, and one match, and that has been like the moment of the tournament for me is their match against Brazil where they made a comeback in the second half with a scoreline of 3-2. And their players, I mean, their fighting spirit, it's crazy. And even on their t-shirts, they have never say die embroidered. And like, I mean, they are following that quote of uh, quote like passionately. And uh, now they have topped the group and they've qualified. So like, I'm really rooting for them. They have never qualified from quarterfinals for the semifinals, but I am really looking forward that they at least qualify for the semifinals this year. Super. They're an Asian team, so yeah. yay for that. Uh, how about you? You've been watching the Dutch, I believe. Yeah, I always uh, watch the Dutch if they're playing in a big tournament. And they've been playing like the way that Dutch football footballers play. I think this is only the second time that the Dutch have qualified for the World Cup. They've never, they qualified for the last edition and now this one. And they're a very young team. And like mm -hmm. Dalima was saying, Lika Martins, who is World Player of the Year mm -hmm. in uh, 2017. And well, she's actually been sort of un a little low key in the first few games for the Dutch. I think my standout player for them has been Daniela van der Donk, who has got no assists and no goals, but she's basically holding the strings to that midfield. Yeah, fantastic looking player, very, very skillful. So, yeah, the Dutch are gonna go far, European champions. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, it's been, yeah, like you said, a lot of really, really quality yeah. football to yeah. watch. A yeah. lot of good goalkeeping, a lot of good uh, goal scoring. <laughs> yeah. I, I really enjoyed the Brazil-Italy game the other night because yeah. it was a, one of those contests between like the flair and style on one side and yeah. organization and defense <laughs> on the other. Actually, like, the, the thing is, like, also, she brought up the Brazil versus Australia game. Yeah. And that's a rivalry in women's football, by the way. Like Brazil, Australia is like a thing yeah. in women's football. They've always been going for each other. They love playing against each other. And it's this exact difference in styles. Like the Brazilians bring the flair. And, and, and see a lot of anger that they uh, coming out. Yeah. A lot of aggressiveness on the field that yeah. came out. Especially when Australia got their first goal, Brazil lost it. And I feel that is one reason why they lost the match as well. It was it was a really good exactly it was pretty much like the game you were yeah. talking about. Yeah. A lot of fun to watch. I mean, because and some of sometimes I think also there is uh, there is a bit of space on the pitch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so there is a little bit of an extra second or so for players to do fun stuff with the ball. Yeah. yeah. And I thought Brazil was doing a lot of that. It's yeah. a, it was like almost a mix of uh, beach football. With like what I feel that <laughs> that is in their roots. Yeah. So like you know, that yeah. it comes naturally it to does. all those players. Yeah. Really, uh, really fun. So as the from uh, match day one, as the tournament has progressed, what for you have been sort of the developments? How has it been evolving as the tournaments gone along? Uh, I feel uh, like, you know, now a lot of people, since they have seen at least the first round of matches, a lot of people have gained interest in the women's football. Not only, I, I wouldn't only talk about the world, but even in India now, I have people who at least train with me and they come and tell me, oh, I saw the match yesterday and look, Alex Morgan scored a hat. She scored five goals. She's got a hat trick in the match the other day. And I feel really happy that now that interest is at least growing up in India and thankfully we could get the rights to show the matches yeah, in India. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. I feel the interest not only like, you know, all over the world, but in even in India, it's growing in women's football. It's also, how is it translating in terms of, uh, again, 
there's a i suppose vast difference between what's happening in france and where things are with women's yeah. football in india yeah. but we the interest level sort of does translate like you're saying the interest level mm. that you get personally or the kind of mm. uh, so how is that playing out in terms of increased attention increased awareness yeah i i would say that people have started recognizing us as women footballers in india now and there are more people who are reaching out to us in terms of uh, like you know talking about the games and like you know in terms of uh, like representing their brand maybe like you know be a face for their brands and talk about their brands and to encourage the youngsters i feel that has in a way changed a lot and not even the fifa world cup coming in i would also say the under 17 fifa world cup the rights that we've got and plus the last four months in the achievements with the national team i feel all of that all together has played a really big role in terms of that attention coming in and that media walking in and like you know giving that time in space for women footballers to speak up and to express themselves and to like you know reach the masses yeah. what's been the reaction sort of to all this media that you're doing now uh, more and more how are people responding to what you put out and it has been pretty positive in a way that uh, like now people are appreciating it because I, uh, before uh, people around me always used to not encourage me in terms of what i was doing and what i wanted to do and if i wanted to take football as a career but now i feel that mentality sort of sort of has changed and that um, awareness has also been created that now if women footballers do want to take up the sport in a country like india they can because now even fifa under 17 world cup is coming in i feel that should play a huge role in terms of changing the mentality in india and like you know bringing about a little revolution in women's football in the country we mm. were last time we met uh, you playing the indian women's league in yeah. ladhiana yeah um so on the one hand you have this increased sort of media attention and uh, more publicity happening I mean, you're doing this right now you were at in the sony sony yeah. <laughs> so you do, doing a lot of stuff but is there a gap between what happens in sort of the virtual space in on social media and what happens in real life in terms of people actually following the game uh i feel that is there because uh like you know it is very easy for people to just sit at one place and like you know just follow and know everything on their phones but Uh, even in IWL, we did not see a lot of people turn up for the games, and it would. It, and um, when the matches were telecasted on football, there was huge viewership on live matches because, as I said, it's very easy to sit at one place and look. But like people do not actually want to turn up to the stadium. Could be. I mean, there could be very various reasons, but yeah, there is a huge difference in terms of that as well. I think a huge amount of whatever whatever we caught from the comment sections of all these live games a lot of people weren't turning up to the stadiums perhaps because of the timing of the games and also because of the lack of publicity about the IWL itself in Yeah game. I mean I wasn't speaking specifically about the yeah. IWL but just in general in yeah. terms in general of the kind of support yeah, and following uh, that the game is getting um coming back to coming back to the world cup so we it's pretty clear now what who the teams are that are going forward yeah. more or less the yeah. big game tonight is USA Sweden which should yeah. be which is actually the <laughs> grudge <laughs> match would be one of the biggest games i guess after brazil australia this is probably like the biggest yeah, game yeah. of the group stages mm. but uh, it's more or less academic uh, only to do with who finishes where in the group actually it makes a huge difference because uh, if the us finish top then they'll face france in the quarters yeah. or they finish second then they avoid then we get the yeah, blockbuster clash later they would be more to lose because they're the favorites of the yeah no you wouldn't want to yeah, yeah absolutely you wouldn't want to drop any yeah, points yeah I, i guess i i don't see the us really dropping points i don't know sweden are good but yeah. like the us have but this yeah. point was actually brought up in our press conference and the coach was like i can't stop them from tackling each other in the field how do you expect me to like tell them to <laughs> lose the game and not face france in the quarter finals so i feel that that's great that's great it'll be like a really nice match to watch tonight So I think uh, the US team I mean they're copying a fair bit of press from different areas for different reasons but I think they've gone into the World Cup uh, with a huge amount of pressure not just because they're world champions but because also of the fact that they're championing a cause for women's football which is bigger than just the game itself yeah, yeah just football itself so that is really i mean that also ties into the larger thing we were talking about exposure for the women's game and i think this world cup is perhaps being followed a little more than 
usual women world cups like there's a lot of eyeballs on almost every team like i i, I think the england team are getting a lot of media uh, we were just talking before the camera started rolling about how the women's teams average uh, viewership on television in england has been more than the english cricket teams viewership so that's uh, that's quite massive if you think about it i think that's true for france also the stadiums are yeah. packing up for their games i don't know if it's massive i mean it's a good reality check for those of us who sit in india i guess because yeah, definitely for the rest of the world there's no real comparison between the numbers that cricket get and for football yeah <laughs> true it's uh, yeah i guess it's massive for us it's for you right uh, it's uh, uh, and england playing i mean i think now you see even when they play friendly games at home or wherever the matches are all sold out and of course they may not necessarily happen at 60000 70000 seater stadiums probably it's smaller venues, no those kind of venues are only selected for by our guys for our matches yeah. so now we're done for <laughs> the other guys also what's making a bigger difference i feel is the uh, like you know the legends like the living legends who are playing the fifa world cup fighting for a good cause for women in football like marta you see her wearing plain black starts with a gender equality symbol and that is what she celebrates after scoring every goal and i feel that's a really good cause but uh, like there's edda on the other side who's not playing the fifa world cup because she wants an equal pay for women and men which is huge and i mean for every game that women players go out it's like a point to prove so i feel that is why there are there are like a lot of people who are paying attention because they are seeing that what are these people actually fighting for so i feel every match that we go out it's like a thing that we have to prove ourselves every match we need to prove ourselves so yeah i think the, the media attention also has probably an impact on how people do on the pitch as well right yeah and some of that seems to be translating i don't know we don't get to watch a massive amount of women's football yeah. especially not international women's football yeah. on a regular basis so uh, a lot of this is and it's a world cup so it's unfortunate but a lot of it is new or rare hmm. that you have the best teams in the world at least on show on a daily hmm. basis for an entire month uh and there i think like everyone's upping their game a little bit little yeah, bit little yeah. bit definitely game by game yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, it started off with sort of a lot of one sided contests with uh, a lot of goals for one team and then n- nothing for the others and then it everyone's now competing and fighting and it's great to see like even the thais get a goal uh, yeah. Night. yeah yeah and the lot of emotions that were evolved i mean involved in within the team after that they after they got their first fifa world cup goal i mean that was crazy and even france like from their last world cup to to this world cup i think they've really upped yes. their game because there are a lot of people who are turning into the stadium to support them to watch them and i feel that is a huge boost for the players who are playing in the field because at the end of the day whatever they're doing their hard work is getting recognized so it seems more realistic from an indian point of view again that the women's team will make it to world cup Yeah. before yeah. a men's team does right how do you view where you where your squad is currently placed in terms of being competitive with let's say the asian teams that are at the world cups so with thailand china japan yeah. korea uh so what i feel is we ranked i mean up right now we ranked 12th in asia but uh after after a four month exposure we could compete with a team like myanmar who is ranked 44th in the world in way above us in asia so i feel if that exposure is continued at least for like years to come i feel we can even uh, make it to the main asian cup from the qualifiers in the coming two years so i feel that shouldn't be difficult but it all comes down to how much of competitive environment and atmosphere we are provided with and the number of matches that we are provided with where we can actually test ourselves and we can test each other as a team together because uh, the number i mean the more number of matches the more experience and i feel the better the game that's that's pretty obvious from just the kind of number of matches that say the american team or the french team or even the norwegian team these national teams the the number of matches they play their youngest players players who are called the the new to the team have already played 50 games yeah. so that's massive yeah, yeah we looking at uh, sort of the stats for christine sinclair and mm. some of these senior players she's of course she's got 181 goals in international yeah. football and four away from being the top all time leading goal scorer and she's played something like 
I think 270 plus games. Yeah. Yeah. That's a massive, it's like a hockey stat. No, I think it's about exposure. Yeah, I mean, just the number of games that the Indian team should be playing and perhaps the number of games that across age groups yeah. they should be given an opportunity to expose themselves to. It's, it's, it makes a huge difference. And it all comes down to the league structure within the country mm. itself. I mean, all the countries who are playing the FIFA World Cup have a well-established league structure, a club. Like, you know, club football is like their culture there and they play all around the year. They're in a competitive season for like around eight months in a year. I feel it does come down to that also because you, all, you need a lot of matches and you need a competitive environment around you, to you for you to grow as a player. Basically, so, killing in it. But in it. But yahan par baat hai na yahan par baat ye hai ki agar aap badhenge nahi to khelenge nahi. Chicken and egg. Yes. So jab Japan ka bhi dekh raha tha main league structure kya hota hai. Hmm. Since 1989 they've had a league yeah. for women and it's a three tier league. Yeah. Hmm. So maybe the third sort of stage is like a qualifier that hmm. gets you into the main uh, rounds of competition, but th still three levels of domestic competition for women, senior women, yeah. and obviously then you have the age, age group, group. Yes, of teams course. in the same setup. So that that's what, and if you look at the list of recent call-ups, for mm. example, that they've had to the national team, we're only talking about Japan because it's just an example close to home or whatever. There are like 50, 60 players that have go recently gone through the national team setup. Mm. So the base that these countries have of existing talent and that is at a certain level mm. is far, I think, greater than what where we are currently. And the yeah. league structure, I mean, I didn't, I, by the way, I didn't ask the question. Yeah, should be For me, happy. So, but, banalo, yaar, bhai, no, please, a good structure, banalo, league, banalo, achhi se karte hai na. Then only <laughs> no, actually, like you're right about like Japan being closer to home, so using them as an example. But I think culturally, like not culturally, maybe I don't know what the correct word is, but in terms of the way that the current situation is, Argentina are probably closer to what the Indian women football structure yeah. is, and their players. And I'm not saying this as like any sort of situation but i'm just saying that their players went and uh, went on strike and really uh, went for the federation saying that they should be provided equal opportunities so mm. it's you know i mean so apparently they had not played a game in almost two oh years. yeah they did not play a game in two years one of their players who sued the federation <laughs> was uh, run out of her contract thrown out of the national setup she's not playing the world cup but she's very happily following the team so yeah there's a lot of basically a lot of interesting stories going on around yeah. the tournament, not just the football. Yeah. And Argentina got their first point, right? Yeah. No, they've got their first oh, sorry, point against point, Japan. So point. they got their, yeah, yeah. they got their first goal and first goals, goals. in a rush of 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I guess that pretty much covers most of the things we had to talk about. The one thing maybe I can ask you just to conclude, since you're saying that there is this little bit of interest and awareness or interest from brands in getting associating with women's football and, and with athletes. Uh, this kind of feeds into the creation of a club structure as well because a, that cannot happen, like sort of no one's going to come and create a club structure yeah. or create these clubs. Yeah. They'll have to happen individually yeah. or groups will have to be, yeah. whatever, however clubs are formed. So is there an interest, do you think, an increasing interest in private parties to put in the money, the time, the effort to set up these clubs? Uh, I, I mean, one thing that I would say is uh, putting a money on a player and putting a money on a team 
which includes staff as well, is very different. And uh, managing a team requires a huge amount of, like, you know, huge amount of finances. And I don't think that at this moment, the stakeholders are ready to do that because even, I mean, only Gokulam has been one team which has been consistent from I-League who has played the IWL because in the first edition, we saw um, Pune City FC, but then they backed out and all the ISL teams did come up, but then, then in the end, they backed out. And I've always said that it would be very beneficial for the women's football if they step in and they create a women's team because they already have a large fan following and that would create a very, very immediate impact on the fans and uh, it would make a very huge different in, difference in terms of how women's football is viewed in the country because uh, women's footballers will be there on their Instagram handle where the men's foot, when men footballers are and people won't like stop following the account so they would then like you know even unconsciously but they will pay attention to the women's footballer as well so I would say managing a player and managing a team is pretty different and the stakeholders at the moment are not ready to put in that amount of money into women's football because they don't see see stability in it at the moment because it is something that is still growing in a country. Although we do need that support, but there needs to be a certain amount of stability for them to actually invest their time and money to be able to succeed. Fair enough. I guess we're all about speculation in this country. Uh, we want to try to <laughs> make it happen real quick. But yeah, if you're not interested in supporting women's football, take a look at the World Cup and what's happening there. Packed stadiums. Uh, I think decent advertising revenues, solid numbers on television. So obviously there is a market there and if market language is the language that we understand, then maybe that will be a cue to start following the women's game a little more here in India. Let's Definitely. hope it happens. And Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. Let's hope that uh, Dalima and the rest of her team don't become such big superstars that they stop coming into this. <laughs> now we've said it on camera. So it's nice. This little clip yeah, we'll is uh, <laughs> getting archived. <laughs> See, yeah. So thank you. Thank once you. Again. Thank you. Great chat. Always good to have you guys. Thank you for watching. See you next week.